the YouTube algorithm cursed me the other day. It had the audacity to put some Undertale fan songs in my recommended. The algorithm had the absolute nerve to show me something that I loved. I'm not very good at letting things go at times, especially stories. So when I was lying in bed trying to go to sleep and my recommended was flooded with songs from seven years ago, Jesus Christ, that was seven years ago, I was just about moved to tears. And so, of course, to cope with my feelings of nostalgia and loss, I'm going to do what any reasonable person would do on the internet. I'm going to order a tall glass of yappuccino and waffle on to the void until it's out of my system. Now, let's begin, shall we? I don't think I need to introduce Undertale at this point. It took the internet by storm pretty much from the moment it was unleashed back in 2015. And let me tell you, even as someone who had and continues to have a deep love of the game, people would not shut the fuck up about it. While I'm sure that you could say this about a lot of fandoms, the sheer quantity and more importantly the quality of fan media that was released for this game was unreal to me. I mean, it's just downright staggering, isn't it? The music, the fan comics, dubs of those fan comics, remixes, covers, collaborations. It was an absolute storm of creativity, and this outpouring of love for a game that you could finish in an afternoon is an astonishing phenomenon unto itself. It was like this unending well of passion just struck everyone all at once. I couldn't even really venture a guess as to what dark magic Toby Fox conjured in order to capture this lightning in a bottle, this once in a generation kind of energy, but I truly wish I could. Even by his own admission, he never could have seen this coming. The impact that Undertale had on an entire generation was impossible to predict. Beyond that though, Toby Fox even stated that if you played Undertale, he doesn't think that he'll be able to make anything that will make you feel that way again. And in all fairness, I don't really know if anyone ever could. I say this because I think that what makes Undertale so precious to so many of us goes well beyond the game itself. The game acts as a core, certainly, a ground zero if you will, but the way that it clearly spoke to and inspired artists in particular makes it something historical. When I get that itching for nostalgia of this game, I'm quicker to pick up media that fans made surrounding Undertale than I am to pick up Undertale itself. And to be clear, none of this is to discredit the actual quality of the game. Clearly, and I mean clearly, it is indeed special to have touched the world in the way that it did. But God, for my money, I find it much more satisfying to see how people took it and just ran with it. I mean, this guy here, this technically unnamed, wordless NPC with three total sprites and is more than likely non-existent within your playthrough of the game, has been spun off as a victim of a tragic experiment gone wrong, a mad scientist conducting experiments on sentient beings, a lost father to two beloved NPCs, or the most powerful magic wielder to ever live. More often than not, he's some culmination of more than one of those things. People love Undertale. Artists love Undertale, and people picked this game apart to hell and back, and after all was said and done, people still held out hope for so long that there was something that everyone missed. There just had to be one more secret. But nothing can last forever, can it? As a fellow artist, I truly feel bad for Toby Fox. I don't think he was prepared for what Undertale would do to his life and to his reputation. As I stated, he doesn't think that he will ever make something that will have that kind of impact on audiences ever again. And I think that's very unfair to himself. Toby is a creative dynamo as far as I'm concerned, and my heart breaks for him when I think that no matter how good everything else that he ever makes will be, it just won't be Undertale. And at the same time, I think he made the right choice in releasing it when he did. There's a part of me that wishes that Undertale was Toby's last great hit and not his first. I think about the guy behind the dog, and I wonder what would have been the best. Instead of having to live up to that for the rest of his life, he could have left that as his last hurrah to us, all of us who love what he does. But I don't think that part of me is correct. That kind of mindset is paralyzing, I think, and ultimately damaging for artists. My mental library is filled with untold stories collecting dust because I don't consider myself worthy of telling them yet. They exist in a corner that I don't go to because I am afraid that if I tell those stories, I won't do them justice. They exist in my brain so perfectly, but if I let them out before I'm ready, then I will tell them wrong. I will fail my stories, and the ideas will be wasted. But you can't waste ideas. Ideas don't just go away. If you've seen Toby's latest project since Undertale's release, Deltarune, you'll notice a couple of familiar faces. While one could argue that Toby is just reusing these characters as a way to appeal to nostalgia, I think that's a very harsh read of the situation. 
Part of what kept and still keeps the Undertale fandom alive is that AUs, alternate universes, are such an integral part to the culture around it. There's a million and one AUs for Undertale, some better than others, I'll admit, but all with a great deal of love and passion. You can take these characters that Toby so carefully created and change them to fit your story. These characters may have the same faces and names, but that doesn't mean that they are the same people. For example, if we look at one of the simpler AUs to come out of the Undertale fandom, Underfell, we see what may appear to be no more than an edgy palette swap for the characters. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be even more than that, however. While in the canon Undertale timeline, almost all of the NPCs that you encounter are benevolent, the reverse is true in the Underfell universe. While you are lied to by one of the few antagonistic forces in Undertale, that it is kill or be killed in this world, this rule actually seems to hold true in Underfell, where it is up to the main character, Frisk, to teach the denizens of the underground that mercy is an option. If such a drastic change isn't to your liking, you still have a plethora of options for fan-made stories. One of my personal favorites is Hand Plates. This story takes place long before the events of Undertale and serves as an explanation for the origins of Sans, Papyrus, and that unnamed NPC that I mentioned previously. In this telling of events, that NPC, by the widely accepted name of W.D. Gaster, serves as the creator of Sands of Papyrus. The story of Hand Plates is long, complicated, and very good by my personal measure, so I don't want to get too into the weeds here for fear of spoilers. I will, however, leave a link in the description for you to read the comic telling of it, if it's to your liking. I like to think that by indulging in some of the same pleasures in Deltarune that his fans have been enjoying since 2015, Toby Fox is smiling at us. A simple nod that says that he sees how much we love his work, and that he loves it just as much, and almost certainly more so. Toby is not the first creator to reuse characters. For example, Kota Hirano, the author of Helsing, famously recycled almost his entire main cast from previous works of his and retooled them into more fully-fledged characters. So no, Toby Fox is not the first or last per se, but I've never seen anyone do it quite like him, nor any fans embrace it to such a degree. Of course, no work of art is perfect, certainly. Not even Undertale. If you hear any critiques of Undertale, it's likely to be one of two things the programming, or the art style. I don't have the coding literacy to comment much on the former, apart from the fact that people that do have such a literacy have explained that it is put together in a fashion that some would refer to as subpar. Undertale is the best example of this. Undertale is made by Toby Fox. Undertale is a brilliant goddamn game. It's very good. It's also coded like shit. And that's fine. If you look at the decompiles that people have done of Undertale, You'll find that there are rooms that have hundreds of if statements checking the same value, then it sets it to zero, then it checks it again before doing anything. Meaning all of those if statements did nothing except for take processing power. There are sections of the game that show like, oh, here's an example. All the dialogue in all of Undertale is in a single switch case statement in one object. It's thousands and thousands of cases long. Single object, all of the dialogue in the game. Hard coded into that object. Insane. Insane behavior. But it doesn't matter. You can be bad at programming and make a brilliant game that changes the entire industry. And, due to its limited pixel graphics, people have called the game ugly. Granted, the vast, vast, vast majority of these people are also talking about how the game is amazing in the next breath despite these critiques, but they are critiques nonetheless. The point being, really, that execution ultimately does not have to be perfect in your art. You can be technically, or mechanically speaking, the greatest painter to ever live, the next Michelangelo, what have you. But if your art has no soul, and if you don't put love into the things that you make, then the audience will have a poor experience. And if it hasn't been made abundantly obvious by now, Toby Fox delivered everything but a poor experience. I think we've all heard it said to not cry because it's over, but to smile because it happened. I think with Undertale, I don't cry because it's over, I cry because it's something that I will never experience for the first time again. Even this script, this video, I don't want to end, really. I'm not very good at letting things go at times, especially stories. This video exists because upon rediscovering Undertale, I was deeply terrified of saying goodbye again. Because this story means more to me than I will ever be able to articulate. There are a million more things that I want to say, and then another million beyond that. But nothing can last forever. In closing, I want to give my utmost thanks to Toby Fox. I am so grateful to have lived in a time where I got to experience your game. As a matter of fact, I think as soon as this video is over, I'm going to go replay it. Now, 
to those of you watching, go play Toby Fox's games. Thank you.